Now, former Virginia Governor and Republican Bob McDonald to talk about the results we're seeing so far. Former Governor McDonald, thank you for being here with us tonight. Good to see you again. You were the last Republican governor of Virginia. So what do you make of what you're seeing so far tonight? Well, I'm obviously pleased uh, with the results so far. It looks like uh, Glenn and Ter and uh, Winsom and Jason are all going to win. And it just seems I traveled around with them yesterday uh, around the state and the uh, the energy was palpable. The enthusiasm for the agenda that Glenn Youngkin laid out, which were really the kitchen table issues, kind of the campaign I ran uh, 12 years ago, uh, which is keeping taxes low, gas, food, taxes on veterans, uh, promoting uh, public safety uh, and giving some high quality options for uh, people in the public school system. But I think, uh, gentlemen, the reason that um, the things have changed over the last, let's say, 30 days is these issues that have happened in Loudoun County that really captured the, the vision and the, the hearts of suburban uh, parents around the state. And, and that is uh, the, the words of Terry McAuliffe bolstered by the school board that really seem to say, hey, parents, sit on the sidelines. Don't tell us how to run our schools, what books to put in the library and what our curriculum is. We can do it because we're the government. And I think that's such a bridge too far that government expects a partnership with parents uh, and people expect a partnership with between government and the parents and not tell them to sit on the sidelines. And I think that was the defining uh, factor down the road. Governor McDonald, do you really think that's what Terry McAuliffe was saying? Hey, parents, sit on the sidelines. Don't be involved in your child's school. He said those words were taken out of context. He's a parent as well. He's had, he has children. He's been involved in their education. So do you really think a parent would say, you're not, don't talk. We don't want to hear what you have to say. We're going to teach what we want to teach. Well, I think there's a distinction. Terry's a good dad. I've met his kids. They're great kids. But that's what he said. There was no context to it. Uh, when he was put right to it, uh, and over the weeks to follow, he doubled down. And what he said is when it comes, this was a case uh, where a parent wanted to come and talk at the school board about something that happened to the daughter. And not only was, uh, not only was the parent essentially uh, ignored, but the parent was arrested, uh, and then there was really no uh, good uh, discussion between the school board, the police department. You have the attorney general of the United States saying we need to investigate people who are raising up these concerns at school boards. Gentlemen, I think that's exactly what he meant, and that's what he said. And I can tell you in the viewpoint of suburban moms, and I'm a dad of five just like Terry, but that's what people heard. And I think that's why you see this significant change from being down one a week ago to now looks like winning four or five points. I think that was the issue that parents heard and they reacted. Uh, but Governor, let's be absolutely clear that in part of this, uh, this, the, this line of questioning that he received had to deal specifically with the issue of critical race theory. You are the governor of this great state. You know that critical race theory isn't being taught in Virginia schools. So why is it a conversation piece now? I didn't mention critical race theory. I think that was a theory designed for law schools whether that program in its uh, in its uh, in, in in tax state is actually being taught in the public schools, I don't know. I don't live in Loudoun County, but, but you live in Virginia, sir, and so you would know. What I think it is is when parents hear that your views on curriculum and content of, of materials in the library uh, don't matter, and they know they've been home now with COVID. They've been home for a while. They've been much more involved in their kids' education. We have a statute that says that parents have a fundamental right to be involved in the upbringing and education of their kids. I signed that bill 10 years ago. Uh, so when they feel like they're not being heard, gentlemen, I can tell you that accounts for a lot of the reaction and why the difference between the last poll and the election results tonight uh, matter. But it's more than that. It's really this uh, support of veterans, support of law enforcement, uh, and these kitchen table issues of, re of reducing the tax on food, on gas, on veterans retirement. People like to hear that you're going to be a practical problem solver. And I think that's the way Glenn Youngkin came up across. I, I, I got to go back to this one more time, just to be absolutely clear. Are you telling us right now that you don't know if critical race theory is being taught in Virginia schools? Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it's being taught in Loudoun County schools. I don't have any more kids in schools. But there are clearly parents who come home and believe that younger people are being asked to view the world through a lens of race. And I think that inference, I don't know what you call it, that's a question for parents and the programmatic stuff uh, for the school boards. But what they heard was that we're being asked to uh, look at things uh, in a way that doesn't seem right. I'm a big proponent, we should teach all our history, uh, the abominable national sin of slavery. We need to tell all of our history 
uh, and we need to be able to make sure that we're doing everything we can to create a colorblind society. That's the American dream. But when you go a step beyond and you tell people that if you have different views and you want to be heard in a school board and you're shouted down and a parent's arrested for having want their voices to be heard, gentlemen, that's, I think, why parents have risen up. Because if you look at where the results are different than they were four years ago or eight years ago, it's the suburban moms, uh, it's the Beltway counties around Richmond and around uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, and the other suburbs. That's where the difference is in this election. Uh, and those are the parents with kids that I think that have uh, had their voices heard tonight. And, and I should point out as well, when we're talking about this conversation about parents being involved in schools, and when we heard Governor McAuliffe making that statement in the uh, the Yunkin ad saying mm -hmm. that parents shouldn't be involved. I don't remember the exact quote in what schools are doing. Something to that uh, He was really talking about a bill that he vetoed while he was governor, uh, not allowing parents to come into schools and remove some books um, that they objected. So he was basically saying, no, the parents don't decide what these classes are learning or what these students are being taught. Um, the schools are going to make that decision. So it wasn't really just about some of these meetings that we've been seeing, these chaotic meetings we've been seeing uh, in Northern Virginia. Well, listen, Former Governor McDonald I, I agree with you that this wasn't the seminal issue, but I'm telling you, that's what parents heard. And that's what I've heard just around my little area in Virginia Beach yeah. and Hampton Roads, that this was a big concern, not just in Loudoun County, but it's really more than that. I think early on and for much of the campaign, uh, Mr. McAuliffe made an issue. Uh, about President Trump, he's not on the ballot. He's been out of office for ten uh, for uh, for twelve months now, and whatever people might thought about President Trump, when you listen to Glenn Youngkin and you heard his message, and he's talking about these kitchen table issues of public safety, education, uh, and the cost of living, he's a positive, optimistic guy that had seemed to have an action plan which he will implement. I think right off the bat, he's a doer. And you contrast that with something I think that was a far more negative campaign with Terry McAuliffe and a focus on uh, President Trump, who's uh, not in office anymore, but President Biden with his 40 percent approval rating is. I really think the national climate did impact the fortunes of Terry McAuliffe uh, in this race uh, and, and not for the better. So that's my assessment. You can disagree with it. Uh, but the parents that I heard and uh, my little focus group down here, they were really concerned about too much government too intrusive, a demonization of police officers as a group, which they felt was unfair. And I think that's why you explain the difference between four years ago and tonight, where it looks like the Republicans are going to carry all three statewide offices the first time since my election in 2009. Now, Governor McDonald, we have a, a couple of seconds left. Really quickly, what do you want to see if Glenn Youngkin is declared the winner, the next governor of Virginia? What do you yeah. want to see him do on day one? What's the biggest issue? Well, first and foremost, I wanted to be a uniter. I, I am uh, I am troubled with the rhetoric and the tone of both political parties in Washington. The political class has created a very bad example uh, for our young people. It's too vitriolic. It's too hyperpartisan. I want him to hold out an office, uh, an olive branch, bring Republicans and Democrats together because reducing taxes on food and gas, veterans. Everybody should agree with that. Bolstering our public safety and better training for our police officers. We all should agree with that. Giving young people, particularly in the under, under cities, uh, people of uh, underprivileged kids, better choices for good schools. Everybody should agree with that. So I think if he does what he said he would, he's going to do, I think we're going to have a lot more unity in the state. And I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. Have you congratulated him yet or are you still waiting for more of the, the votes to come in, the results rather? Well, I'm here with uh, my good friend, uh, Jason Miaris, who I think will be the next attorney general of Virginia. I'm with his a celebratory party here tonight in Virginia Beach, which is my hometown, uh, along with Governor Allen and some other uh, some other uh, folks that are friends of his. Uh, but I was with uh, Mr. McCall, uh, uh, Mr. Yunkin all day yesterday flying around the state. I'm really encouraged with the kind of leader. I think he's going to be a humble servant leader with a bold vision. And uh, I'll congratulate him later tonight or in the morning. All right. Former Governor Bob McDonald, thank you for giving thank us you some of your time with us tonight. Appreciate the opportunity. Good to all see right. you again.